I haven't filmed in so long, I literally forgot how to work the camera. <laughs> Alright, hey guys, my name is Beverly, and um, this is basically just going to be a very long video. I'm just let you know right now, it's going to be a very long video, but I'm here to talk about some stuff, some serious stuff about my life, my Christian testimony, and also the reason why I deleted my last YouTube channel. I used to be here on YouTube and I was under the name La Vie Um I had a beauty channel and um, I used to do makeup and all that stuff on YouTube. I was born into Christianity. So growing up I always had a desire. I really, like my mother always used to bring us to church and she was just a godly woman. She is just a godly woman. She would always bring us to church and everything with her. And I always had a desire. I always liked that. I like going to church and I like being around people. And the, like the question of the presence of God, it was always like a mystery to me. And I always wanted to be able to feel it. So I used to sing in the church. I used to sing all the time. <laughs> the church was my freaking stage, you know what I'm saying? I stopped singing, not just because of nothing, but just the fact that I just can't, I couldn't bring myself to sing. And um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how people assume things of me that aren't necessarily true and how they affected me. Like people in the body of Christ and their problem with assuming. So when I stopped singing, people just thought, oh, I grew up. But in reality, I just really couldn't sing. As I grew up in my teen years, I started to have this issue with vanity. And so I never really appreciated my natural hair. I kind of, um, I got a perm at a young age. I didn't necessarily appreciate my natural beauty at all. So I started to wear a lot of fake hair. And I was really creative with it. One time, I even, I had like, half blonde and half black that was me i was that creative chick so i would wear fake hair all the time and um what around that stage in my life it was really complicated because i was going through some stuff i i was frustrated because i didn't understand nor did i know what the presence of god felt like as i said before it was always a mystery to me and i always wanted to feel it and i got mad because like, I was functioning in a state of self-righteousness. Like, I thought if I wasn't doing anything crazy, like all the other kids out here being crazy, you know, then why isn't God using me? Why isn't, why aren't, aren't I feeling God's presence? So, one time at a service that we had, I was probably around 14 years old, freshman year of high school, we had a service, and um, something happened to me, of which I had my fake hair and my hair, and I was in the service and I just, I was so angry because I was like, it's not fair. Like we go through this all the time, God, why can't I feel your presence? Where are you? I need your presence right now. Come right now, Jesus. Your presence is coming right now. <laughs> you know, I was basically demanding to feel God's presence to God, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like how dare you demand anything of God? But I was mad. I was very angry. I was young. I didn't understand that the key was a relationship with God. So what happened was, um, basically, something crazy happened. A lot of people assumed that it was the evil spirit. Other people assumed it was the presence of God. I don't believe it was the presence of God because, as I said before, I demanded for it. I was angry, I was frustrated, and I wasn't living my life in a way that his presence could really, you know? So I don't believe it was the presence of God. But anyways, what happened from there is um, this lady prayed for me. And then she said the issue was in my hair. She told me to take my hair out and not to put it back in my, not to put fake hair back in my hair. At this point of life, I was like, what? Because fake hair was me. Like, I did fake hair. You know, I was that creative chick with the fake hair. My hair was ugly to me. You know what I'm saying? It's natural. Like, what am I going to do with it? Don't nobody, you know, my hair short. <laughs> it's natural. What am I going to do with it? So, freshman year of high school, I went without fake hair. Later on, fast forward, 
I'm still in this position. Like, around that time, I was so lost, y'all. I was so lost. I remember going to my pastor, and I asked him, and I was telling him this stuff, and he was like, he told me, he's like, I don't think anything is wrong with you. I just think, I think you're okay. I thought there was something wrong with me. I was like, he said, I don't think anything is wrong with you. And he said that the key is a relationship with God. That's what you need. And then I did not understand what he meant at all. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what he meant by it. The key is a relationship with God. I didn't get it. So I fell right back into self-righteousness. And I fell right back into the rules. They told me don't put fake hair. Yada, yada. I'm like, I bet if I don't wear fake hair, then God could use me. Then he's going to use me. I'm not out here being crazy like them other kids. He's going to use me. He's going to... He's going, I'm going to feel his presence, right? So, I'm just like, I'm like, okay, I'm in this self-righteousness. You know, I'm not doing nothing crazy because my my parents brought us up that type of way. We're very sheltered, so we never really do any crazy things. So, I don't do anything crazy. I'm being good. I'm being nice. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I don't have to take care. But nothing changed, y'all. Like, that's what I'm saying, like. When I don't agree with rules and I don't agree with laws, this is the reason why. After that time, I followed the rules. I followed the laws. I did the good deeds and nothing changed. I was still lost. I still did not feel God's presence. And I still did not understand that the key was a relationship with him. I didn't understand what that meant. So I never really formed that continual relationship with him because I didn't understand. I just thought, you know why I got no fake hair in my hair. You know what I'm saying? I look nice. I look like that nice little Christian. Christian, I don't have no fake hair. I don't have no fake nails. I'm following the rules. I'm being good. I'm being nice. He should use me. His presence should be in my life and things should change. It didn't change. It got worse. <laughs> and so I fell into this sin. This one sin that I am not comfortable to disclose. <laughs> I fell into this one sin in my life, um, in my teenage years, my younger teenage years. And I, I didn't know if it was wrong because no one really told me. And so I became enslaved to that sin. And I just didn't understand why I just kept falling victim to that sin because I, again, I was being nice. I was doing the good stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I just kept falling. And then people just kept saying, Jesus is your answer. God is going to save you. Who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. But then I'm just like, I just keep falling. I just keep coming back up. I ask him for forgiveness, but I just keep falling right back into this sin. I don't understand. Nothing's happening. I'm never going to be free. You know what I'm saying? You know what the devil does after you sin. He comes with all his friends and then he just dumps all his friends in your courtyard. Got his friends, depression, you know, guilt, all those bad spirits just taunting you. And that's what was happening to an adolescent me. I didn't understand. It went from me not understanding what I was doing was wrong to me kind of understanding what I was doing was wrong and not understanding why I couldn't stop doing what I was doing. I used to think that I could do something to stop myself from falling into that sin. Maybe if I do this or if I do that, I'm not going to fall into the sin. So I became, like, I started doing things to stop me you know what i'm saying like trying to take it onto my own hands to stop but in reality i couldn't stop just me so i was praying not really but i was praying when i would fall and then i'd get back up and i'd be like all right we got this we're not about to do this again and then i wouldn't hold on to god see a lot of times what we do is we have our issues and then we pray about it and everything but then we think there's some way that we can stay free of sin without God. The only way to stay free from sin is to cling on to God and to have that relationship that I didn't understand at that moment. And so we had them issues, you know what I'm saying? I also had issues with like loneliness and um it just it was a point where like I've never had a best friend and all of my friends they just would like turn their backs on me or betray me or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't quite understand it. Now I understand like it was just God calling me and helping me to understand that I shouldn't be relying on these people. I should be relying on him because I'm the type of person that I'm I'm very loyal and I expect people to be the same way and I get really angry when they're not. And so I had to he had to teach me not to rely on people. So those years of my life I was very lost and I didn't know what to do and I just 
kept falling and getting back up. And with my hair and everything, what happened was I kind of learned over time that my hair shouldn't have power over me. And so now I wear fake hair and people don't quite understand. And a lot of times they like to like come down my throat about this stuff about fake hair and all that stuff and it's like they just don't understand that it's it's not because i think i'm better and when i say going back to the topic of assuming that happens so much in the christian house uh, in the haitian household they love to assume so much of you all right now i'm back in a whole nother location but back to what we were saying like um when i i think i was about a senior in high school or freshman or summer year of college when I started to wear fake hair again and I want to address the issue of assuming within like certain communities the danger of it like a lot of people like to assume things like I know in my family and my culture personally that like, they don't tend to like ask you anything so like when the whole situation with my hair happened no one took the time out to ask me anything it was just here's the law you cannot wear fake hair. That's it. And they just threw the lot down my throat. <laughs> okay? Nobody took the time to ask. Like, people were just talking. Like, oh, it's the Spirit of God. Oh, it's not the Spirit of God. Everybody's talking and talking. Nobody's talking to me. No one. I, I don't know. Maybe because I was like 14 or something years old. No one took the time. I cannot remember one person who took the time to ask me, what happened, Beverly? What happens? How do you feel? What led up to that? What's the situation? Nothing. Do you have any questions about what happened to you? Do you have any concerns? Nobody said that to me. No one was there to lead and guide me. I felt lost. I didn't have no older sister. I'm the oldest. I felt so lost. Like no one was there and no one helped, like really helped. They thought they were helping with their encouraging words. Like my mother, she would just, she, <laughs> with her encouraging scriptures and her stories about King David and stuff like that but to a lost teenager that doesn't help you know what I'm saying that just doesn't help I know you have all your faith in Christ but I don't I don't even know how what does that mean you know what I'm saying so as a kid I was so lost and nobody people were just assuming things of me so when I put my hair back in I mean, not my hair not my hair but when I put fake hair back in everybody was just like oh she thinks she's grown now. Oh, you think you're a demoiselle. Demoiselle in Creole is like a, you know, a young girl, you know, grown. You think you've grown. Oh, they're this, they're that. And they were just, like, it wasn't only me. It was, like, the whole um, community. I mean, the whole youth community. They would just assume things of us. And in reality, reality, I can tell you that a lot of us, we're just lost and we just need help and we don't need people to assume things of us we don't need th people to like make conclusions we need sometimes we just need someone to be like what's up what's happening how do you feel what happened you have any questions no one did that everyone just assumed people made conclusions people created you know things and they, they shoved it down your throat like here take this you know what I'm saying? And then so for so long, people were telling me, like, God's not going to flow to, to you if you have this or if you have that or if you have this or you have that. And so that created a mindset in my head that I needed to be a certain type of way. I needed to look a certain type of way. I need to, you know, do certain type of things in order for God to be in my life. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I really expected for God just to be in my life because... I didn't have any fake hair. And that's the reason why I can care less now about those, oh, you can't wear fake hair rules because that's not going to help you. That's not, you know what I'm saying? And like God has his own, I believe that God has his own specific desires for each of his children. So if he comes to you directly and he's like, look, stop wearing fake hair or stop wearing fake nails or stop wearing makeup, then that's up to you. Like that's not even up to you. You must obey him. But if it's like people creating rules and doctrines and stuff like that, I, I think twice about them because I lived by them and they did nothing for me and it was all a lie. And if you think about it, like you cannot satisfy anyone because when I had my real hair out and I would wear my real hair, I remember one time this pastor was preaching a sermon at one of my churches and then as I was walking in, 
I don't know if he was directing it to me or if it was just a coincidence, but he started talking about how natural girls wear natural hair and it's un they don't do their hair, you know, like a whole bunch of Haitian, you know, stuff. And it's unclean. It's, it's not clean. It's unclean. God calls to be clean. Then you start doing their hair, all that other stuff. Like, that was the last straw for me. Like, I'm done trying to please man i'm done doing that so i'm going to put fake hair back in <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i'm going to make sure it doesn't become an idol for me like it was before so that's just my whole little testimony about vanity and it's funny because i was debating whether or not i should put makeup on my face to do this video but then i was just like you know what no that's it's not even that deep <laughs>